one day and the opportunity is to get people to want to stop. And whether that's to stop and get a pizza or stop and play pickleball at our at one of our uh, tennis courts or come to the, the community swimming pool, which again is another uh, development opportunity we have. We believe in the, in the community swimming pool and what it what it does for a sense of community, and so we're trying to invest about a million dollars in the renovation of the swimming pool. Again, all these are pieces that we need to put together in order for someone to want to stop and have dinner, or stop and think about, well maybe, okay, I live in Reading, and I work in Lebanon. And so I, we have a lot of people like that, and they drive through Myerstown every day. Why don't they move their families to Myerstown and be half the distance work and be that much more time to spend with their family. So I don't know if that answers your question. Those are both opportunities and also barriers we need to remove. Uh, Alex, um, from a uh, uh, policy perspective, does Lebanon County uh, present challenges that are different than other parts of the state? Um, and uh, so what are they? Uh, whether they are challenges or whether they are benefits, uh, can you comment about that? Lebanon County, I think, has uh, has many of the great um, op presents a lot of the great opportunities and attributes that the Commonwealth as a whole uh, has. You know, I think, uh, and, and a lot of these issues have been mentioned already. Uh, our geographic location, our, our uh, Keystone State moniker, uh, holds true as much today as it did a couple hundred years ago. Uh, our, you know, both, both from an east-west and north-south perspective, we're in this great location, our proximity to so many uh, major markets in the country uh, presents a great, a great opportunity. Uh, that also means, and I think that's a, uh, it's especially acute in this area, uh, our, our, tra our transportation and infrastructure needs are significant. And, uh, and and it's been a it's been a challenge at the state level and, and always a challenge at the federal level uh, to convince policymakers to continue devoting the attention and ultimately the resources to keeping our infrastructure uh, <coughs> up to date and certainly safe, uh, but also to uh, encourage businesses to expand and make sure that there will be a, an infrastructure in place to get their their goods to market. The General Assembly considered uh, transportation legislation a couple years ago, and the Pennsylvania Chamber was advocating for, uh, I guess depending on how you want to call it, but was advocating for a tax increase. And we've been around for about 100 years, uh, 100 years sort of started in 1916, so you can prepare to have birthday notes now for next year. But we, uh, uh, you know, we can count on one or two hands the number of times that we've advocated for a tax increase. Uh, but this was one of them because we know how, how critical it is to employers, both in terms of uh, moving their, their goods to market, but also the transportation of their employees to get to and from work. That's why we were big advocates for, uh, for mass transit. We know for so many of our members, maybe not as much in, uh, in this area, but certainly in a lot of the urban centers, uh, mass transit is, is, uh, is critical. Over half their employees, we know in some cases, get to work from uh, uh, through, through mass transit. Uh, in terms of, of public policy uh, you know, challenges, uh, you know, I think for, for communities like, uh, like those in Lebanon County, but just like communities throughout Pennsylvania, uh, part of the frustration is you, know, you all are, are very committed to improving your, your local climate to make it conducive to businesses, to encourage businesses to locate here, for existing businesses to expand. Uh, that is a top priority for you, but uh, so many of the, the policy uh, and, and legislative considerations that uh, companies uh, look for are, are focused at the, at the state level. And uh, oftentimes it's, it's really not even uh, in the discretion of local elected officials to change anything. And that's kind of where uh, our organization comes in and many coalitions that have formed of local elected officials. And, and there are uh, great organizations that represent the boroughs, for example, townships, counties, uh, that advocate for policies, uh, some, some of which are to give local elected officials more control and, uh, and, and more discretion to kind of improve their, their local climate or to 
improve the fiscal health of their area. Uh, you know, critical issue that we're dealing with at both the state and local level, and it's the, it, is, it is our number one public pro uh, policy priority right now, uh, are public pensions. Uh, you, there, there's so much attention right now, and rightfully so, on the two state public pension systems, the one for state employees and one for public school teachers. Those pension systems combined have an unfunded accrued liability of over $50 billion. That's billion with a B. And, and that, is a, that is a huge concern, and, and it's a growing concern for employers who realize that uh, as lawmakers sort of kick the can down the road on addressing that, so at some point that bill is gonna come due. And when you're considering different revenue enhancers, uh, do you look to property taxes? God forbid. Do you look to the person, you know, do you, do you look to other, other tax on individuals, or do you look to the business community? There are a whole host of other reasons why our public pension uh, crisis we're in uh, is, uh, is a problem for employers, uh, both from a fiscal health of the state, and we've had our credit uh, downgraded multiple times in the agencies, whether it's, uh, well, all, all the agencies have cited public pensions as, as one of the reasons why our credit has been downgraded. Um, and the problem is, is similarly uh, acute at the local level where many municipalities, I think almost every county has a municipality, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong here in Lebanon, uh, where a municipality has a pension system under distress. Uh, that type of, a, of an environment, I think, just, it just creates some, some of the uh, uncertainty uh, among employers, again, many of whom you know, may be looking to locate in, in Pennsylvania or expand in Pennsylvania. We ask our members in a survey every year uh, if they could leave Pennsylvania and go to another state, would they? And uh, although those numbers are improving, it's still over half. And as someone who uh, you know, born and raised in Pennsylvania, I did leave for a little while and then came back, it's kind of heartbreaking to hear that most businesses, at least in a survey, if they could leave Pennsylvania, would. Uh, would. So that's something I think we have to consistently work to improve and try to, try to flip, flip those numbers around. Uh, Unique to Lebanon County, I think some of the problems we have statewide, some of them may be a little more acute in this area. Some, you know, your, your locals have done a great job to mitigate what the state, you know, the, 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 uh, the hand that the state has dealt you. Uh, but it's, it, it is an ongoing kind of never-ending process of, of making our state business climate as friendly to business as possible. Are there, um, does the Pennsylvania Chamber take its input primarily from the local chambers? or uh, if there's a business owner who has a uh, concern in particular, are there avenues to directly access the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry with those concerns? I, I, mean, I, I personally feel calls regularly uh, from members of ours, but especially from a lot of, a lot of local chambers. And uh, that's, it's, it's critically important for us to hear and, and gather input from all of the chambers. In fact, coming here today, my hope was during this discussion, I would get some, some good feedback from you all. Uh, but it's true. I mean, we, we're in we're in Harrisburg. A lot of what uh, you know, we're and, and we are not employers, so we are only as good as the input that that we receive from uh, from businesses. Uh, so we do conduct uh, surveys every year. We have an, uh, an economic survey that we uh, that we conduct every year, where we ask a series of questions about. Uh, employers' views on the business climate in Pennsylvania. Uh, some of the questions are the same every year, so we can uh, look for patterns. Uh, other questions vary depending on what specific issues are being considered uh, in uh, in Harrisburg in the state legislature. Uh, so that combined with you know, we, we have committees and a, and a board and of course our local chamber network that uh, that's very good, I'd say, at providing that, that input that we, that we see. Thank you. Uh, Susan, coming back to you, um, what do you believe are the greatest opportunities the Lebanon Valley uh, has at this time for businesses? Am I taking 20? Uh, 20. No. <laughs> That's your own, that's your own. Right. <laughs> I, th I think some of our greatest opportunities lie within each and every one of us in this room here today. I believe you make the most impact in the community by bringing various organizations and people together to help others. Uh, by proactively working together, we have opportunity to set the course. 
and that was shown in a slide as one of you know the city's uh, strengths. But that carries over into all economic development uh, collaboration. So that's an opportunity to continue that collaboration and help the growth. Um, we also have an opportunity to promote and market our region as a place where you can live, work, play, and stay. And that's, that's critical because a lot of uh, people want a good quality of life. I think the new destination marketing organization that the county just uh, designated is a wonderful tool. It's a great opportunity because tourism is a key component and a strength for um, our county. And then another area I think that we need to really start taking a look at is investing in our youth and our available workforce. Um, we now have the Workforce Investment Board sitting at our alliance table. We have um, Lowry <coughs> County businesses uh, represented on the WIP. That's another strength. Um, we have partnerships with our education systems, and uh, that will help to fill uh, business needs. That's other, another opportunity. And I think uh, a lot of our own opportunities are in our own backyard. You know, statistics show that 80% of all business, industrial, and economic growth comes from companies that are already, already located. I know you get a lot more buzz when you get the new uh, companies coming in, but that's only like a small percent, like 20% move in. And I think what's a real opportunity is we have such a diverse uh, business sector. And this, help, this will help keep the local economy strong as well. Just like um, business investments that are going on, when you just even look at the north, well, what uh, the mayor said earlier, $17 million of private investment into the city, that's huge. And you look at all the development going on in the northern part of the county, Bell and Evans uh, is investing millions and millions of dollars on their projects. And they're going gangbusters. I mean, their their new manufacturing facility will soon open. But then that wasn't enough. They uh, decided to move forward with their their hatchery. And in the process of that, they decided that they're going to open a manufacturing facility for um, manufacturing dog food. So that is another. They're looking at another like 1,600 jobs just for that area. The developers I talked about earlier, they're getting pad ready sites. Um, of ready, you know, at one million, half a million square feet, and having available uh, sites and buildings ready is an opportunity. And I really have a passion for reuse. I think it's a shame if we just go out and build and build and build when we have so many buildings and uh, things. We need to really put an effort on um, uh, remediation and renovation and, and using what we have in our cities and in our boroughs and making sure that they're strong. Uh, MSC Industrial, uh, they just announced that they're going to be doing a 250,000 square foot expansion, uh, injecting billions into new investment there. Uh, and then we have a booming healthcare system. When you look at the Good Samaritan Hospital and the VA Medical Center, Bill Mulligan sent me some data yesterday. 300, um, 332 million in, in economic impact to our county just comes from 11 in uh, the Good Samaritan Hospital alone and what that generates. Those are big numbers. And then we have um, people that are willing to donate you know, to build uh, cancer centers and inject money into uh, infrastructure and into programs and into people's lives in our community. Um, so there's, there's uh, strong opportunities. We have a strong manufacturing base in our community. We have tools in our toolbox, and we have knowledge. Um, we have a lot of knowledge, we have a lot of resources, and I think all that blended together uh, gives us uh, many, makes Lebanon County stand out. Thank you. Uh, Chris, from the uh, from the Myerstown perspective, uh, any recommendations as to what can be done to enhance the business and economic climate uh, for not only Myerstown but Lebanon Valley? Well, sure. The um, I'll try to keep this brief. The one of the barriers that we've um, encountered is, is, is our own agencies getting in the way of each other. I think we have to reduce those barriers 
try and work together uh, on accomplishing these goals. I've said before, it's in the report that you heard this morning, that the small business development growth is where the jobs are created overall, and that's where the investment comes in the community to work for the force. That's why some of the recommendations you saw in this morning's report with the city. So we have to, we have to, we can't solve the problems. The local government not solve the problems. But we sure as heck shouldn't be in the way of getting those barriers, of getting those, those issues solved. And uh, that's what Myerstown has to do. We have to get out of our way, our way and let the, uh, the market drive growth in small business. And one of the ways we're doing that is, and I heard it this morning as a theme, is to find that central point, that one-stop shop for economic development. And so we wrote a grant uh, for, for Myerstown, and we are happy that we partnered recently with the city of Lebanon to provide a, um, a circuit rider is the, is the name, I didn't pick it, but a, a, a gentleman or a lady who would be primarily focused on small business development within Myerstown Borough and find ways to remove those barriers. Uh, help a person write a business plan. Help uh, entrepreneurs that either are in business and want to expand or locate a second store or what have you. Be the catalyst for that, for that person. Make it easy to get the approvals, to get the permitting, to get the financing whether it's through LVBC or Community First Money or whatever, wherever that sourcing is. Hook them up with Ben Franklin Partnership or whatever to get them all the tools that they need in their toolbox in order to grow and expand their business or to start a new business. And that's why I was so passionate about the incubator too because that's another side of this economic, small business economic growth because some of those folks, especially technology firms, can incubate there at low cost, and uh, we can help them succeed early on in the development. Because we all know most businesses fail in the first three years, five years, uh, over half of them fail. Maybe that's even a higher percentage, I don't know what exactly. But we need to get out of the way. And what Lebanon Valley can do, one of the things that I've been doing is tracking the Central Penn Business Journal, the lists that uh, they do. I think it's an excellent um, opportunity to, to look at Lebanon the county versus the other counties in central Pennsylvania. And so what I've been doing is trying to track where our deficiencies are in those lists. Because uh, we're competing against Lancaster County, and Dolphin County, and, 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 and Berks. And we're, we're competing against those, those folks in central PA. And so Lebanon has to find out where are we deficient against our, our peers in this region. Because we are in a good region. Uh, Transportation-wise, proximity to major U.S. cities, you know, the beach, whatever, we're on Lebanon Valley's in an excellent spot. So we have to find out why the, what the, what the county, where, where our deficiencies are within within this region, and that's why, you know, I haven't done any formal research on it, but I think something should be done uh, within our region to see how we. Where are we deficient uh, against our peer groups in Lancaster and Baltimore? Uh, Alex, any advice you would give uh, uh, the County uh, from the standpoint of uh, what can be done to improve uh, its attractiveness for economic development? I really think uh, Chris uh, hit the nail on the head in, uh, in terms of uh, coordination, and this theme has been discussed, I think, throughout the session. Coordination and communication between elected officials, uh, the various sectors, whether it's, whether it's higher education uh, or, or the business community or, uh, or others. Uh, before coming to the Pennsylvania Chamber, I worked down in Washington, D.C. Uh, for an elected official, and uh, I, would, I would talk a lot with folks at, at different departments uh, in the federal government who were uh, accepting grant applications for money for different projects. We were always trying to advocate for, for any uh, coming from Pennsylvania. But uh, a, a consistent theme that we heard from these kind of uh, federal uh, folks in the 